Now, let me run through just a couple of um, examples where this is, this is useful. Gosh, I think I'm only going to have time for one of them. Um, this is, uh, these are st a study of stingray by uh, John Dale um, in Hawaii. This is Kaneohe Bay where these stingrays live. This is Kailua Bay. I live right around here. Um, John came into my lab one day and said, Brian, I've been studying these brown stingray in Kaneohe Bay, and I think that Kaneohe Bay is a nursery for these stingray. Um, and I've been catching them in the bay. I, the reason I think that they're a nursery, he said, was that he catches small stingray in the bay and their stomachs are full. And you can count the organisms in there and calculate a trophic position. And, um, and he also said that he occasionally finds big stingrays in the bay. And invariably, except for one large female, their stomachs are empty. All right, but he catches them, the large stingrays outside of the bay and his stomachs are full. So he, he thought that the, this was a, a nursery where the young stay until they reach a certain age and then they leave. Now, the reason they leave, who knows? It could be predation within the bay. There are a number of different reasons why they should leave. But he wanted to determine whether, he wanted to see if stable isotope analyses would support his hypothesis. Okay, so see, so well, John just bring us some samples. We'll analyze the isotopic composition, see what we get. All right, that's kind of depressing, huh? This is the delta 15n value of just a bulk bit out of the the um, the ray. You know what is that? Base gallops? Is that what they're called? Anyway, it's a function of disk width. As the 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 size of the organism changes, the mouth changes, you would expect them be to become more heterotrophic or a higher trophic level. And delta 13C as a function of disk width. And they're segregated by location in Kaneohe Bay and outside of the bay. Do you see a pattern there? No. You could take a shotgun and shoot it, and you get a better pattern. So it's, John, we got the data. You better come into my office, and we'll talk about it. And so we looked at it, and I said, you know, the peculiar thing is that, you know, these big rays over here have these low delta 15n and delta 13c values. You know, the, the explanation for low delta 15n values is a lower trophic position. John, are these lower trophic position? He said, no, no, if anything, they're higher. I said, so, okay, well, we've been working on a new technique, compound-specific nitrogen isotope analyses of amino acids, and I think we can look at what the change in trophic position is between the scattered group here and the scattered group here, and at least eliminate changes in trophic position and maybe learn something about it. So we did. Here's the, you know, our question was why do these these values decrease. I mean, they don't become vegans as they swim out of the bay, you know. So uh, we analyze it. Here's the difference between the isotopic composition of glutamic acid and phenylalanine to calculate the trophic position. These blue circles are the bulk analyses. You can see we got the scatter in the small ones, the lower values in the big ones. This was that big female that was found in the bay that had its stomach full. It's the only one he found. But we analyzed it just to be, you know, because it was there. We wanted to know what it was. That, you know, if any, their, their trophic position increases as a function of size. It doesn't decrease. So what this tells us is that definitely these, it's unequivocal evidence that these bulk values are a signal of the base of the food web. And they tell us that it's telling us about migration. These things are swimming outside of the bay. They're now living in a region that has a lower baseline, and that's propagating up the food web. OK, so John had a big smile on his face. And he went away, and he called me up and said, Brian, i got to show you something. Can I come back to your office? And he plotted this up. And he said, OK, I changed the designation on here. So it's delta 15n versus disk width by sex, where the, the blue are the boys and the pink are the girls. Delta 13C versus disk width, again, the same color designation. And I said, huh, well, that's kind of interesting. What, 
What are you driving at? Well, let me show you this one. This is their median size at sexual maturity. Look at how that changes. For the males, males mature at a smaller size than females in elasmobranchs. Uh, that's known, sharks, rays, everything. All the blue points are lower above this mean size of sexual maturity. The females, there's also a drop in the values with sexual maturity. So it's coinciding exactly from when they're migrating outside of the bay and start feeding in this area that has a lower baseline. It takes that total scatter and data and makes sense out of it. And I think that's the main power of this tool. We can begin to trace the sources of nitrogen, the fuel production that gets transferred throughout this food web. And we can normalize it. We can, we can compare regions that are really, really different. Um, one last example. This is another migration story. Uh, this is Dan Madigan's work. Again, Dan was a, um, a student, a, a 2009 ISOCAMP graduate. Dan was studying uh, bluefin tuna off the coast of Southern California. And it was, his dissertation coincided with the disaster in Japan of the um, Daiichi power plant. Um, uh, what's the name of that power plant? Zok yeah. Uh, and his first studies were of the radiocesium. And uh, he was collecting samples in this region and he collected 14 samples of small bluefin that he had inferred migrated from the coast of Japan to Baja. And every 14 of those showed a radio cesium signature that was indicative of the, um, the disaster, of the nuclear disaster in Japan. So we went back and we had some of these that we knew, these small tuna, um, amongst this large population uh, that we knew had recently migrated from Japan. So Western Pacific has very different delta 15N values at the base of the food web than the Eastern Pacific. And you can see that here's length of tuna versus bulk delta 15N value. And there's a segregation. Here we have, there's bluefin tuna, uh, and there's yellowfin tuna within this mix. The yellowfin are the crosses. They don't migrate, but the bluefin do. But these are residents, and these are um, migrants into the system. Now, it's thought previously, before this study, that the only migration occurs from these year class one to two, these smaller tuna. But what Dan found is that while that indeed was true, year class one and two size tuna made up 75% of the migrant population. This population was also supplemented by year class three. Now, maybe not as much, but that's like what, 35, 40% of the population? That's an observation that's really important if you want to manage this, the, the fisheries within that region. You know, bluefin tuna. It's great sashimi. People go and catch that fish and they eat it. Well, here's the source amino acid delta 15N value of one of those migrants. And the source amino acid delta 15N value of the residents, resident bluefin, ye resident yellowfin, as well as some of the prey items. They're, they're much higher. We can use this as an indicator of migration within this, this region that is base and wide. And it's not going to go away. It's not going to decay away like the radiocesium signature.